If you haven't seen the last video yet, I will drop that above. In short, I picked up the iPad Air recently and we just lost power. All right, well, power is back on for now. What I was trying to say is if you haven't watched the last video yet, essentially what happened is I picked up this iPad Air 5. I really think this thing could be powerful enough for editing an entire YouTube video. I'm actually packing up right now to go on vacation. So I figured the best way to test this theory out is bring this thing with me and see if we can make an entire YouTube video all on the iPad 5. The app I'm using is called LumaFusion. We're gonna go over the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. I'm gonna see how this works out. I mean, I have high hopes for it, but there's gotta be a reason this thing's only 550 bucks, right? Anyways, iPad Air 5 plus LumaFusion, can you make an entire YouTube video? Let's find out. So, let's talk file management. The best workflow I found for this is USB-C card reader into the USB-C port, put your memory card in there, and then upload the photos to a separate file on your iPad. So when you're editing, you don't have that card reader in the way. Usually what I'll do is I'll edit the files on the iPad, but then when I'm done editing them, I'll switch them over to an external hard drive to free up space since this is only a 64 gigabyte iPad, so you'd probably fill it up within one video. Importing files to LumaFusion itself is pretty easy. One thing I don't like about how this works is you can't create folders or bins within LumaFusion. So for example, in DaVinci Resolve, usually I would create a bin and I'd have one for A roll, one for B roll, etc. In LumaFusion, you just have all of your imported clips in one place, which can get a little bit confusing to work through, especially if you're working on multiple videos because all of your imported videos are in one spot. There may be a way to create folders in here. If there is, let me know, but I haven't found it yet. But other than that, it's been pretty smooth. Uh, it's pretty quick to upload the files on here. It's not slow by any means. I think it probably takes around the same time that it would on my computer. Again, it just looks a little bit unorganized for my liking. So that's the file system. Now let's move into color grading. So before we moving to color grading, we need to talk about file management a little bit more really quickly. I thought that I was editing the files off my external hard drive by importing them into LumaFusion. What was happening is I was importing the files off of my external hard drive into LumaFusion and that was creating a cache on my iPad of those media files. So although I wasn't saving the files on my iPad, LumaFusion was creating its cache, which makes sense on the iPad. But there is a fix for this and you can edit directly off your external hard drive without saving anything to the iPad at all. Instead of going up into the corner and importing your video so what you're going to want to do is go into linked folders and you're going to create a linked folder to your external hard drive. I don't know if you've ever edited off an external hard drive before, but it's very slow. Now, in the luckiest turn of events ever, the sponsor of today's video is Uni Accessories and they sent me out this external M.2 enclosure. This wasn't planned whatsoever, it just happened to work out perfectly. M.2 SSDs are the fastest hard drives you can get for a computer out there. What this enclosure does is it makes it portable, so perfect if you're doing editing off an iPad or a laptop. It connects via USB-C cable and as you'll see here, it's very easy to put together. First, you'll open the enclosure and take out the rubber fastener. Then you'll insert your SSD as shown here. If it's inserted correctly, it should stand up a bit. You will then attach the rubber fastener onto the SSD and clip it down. Then take the included thermal pad and put that on top of the chipset of the SSD. What this does is it helps heat dissipation so you don't have to worry about thermal throttling. And then you just slide it back into the original case until you hear it click. So super easy to put together. This thing has been a life changer. I mean, I literally would not have been able to finish doing this video on the iPad if it wasn't for this. So huge shout out to the kind folks at uni for sending this over for me to try it's been a game changer for editing on here i promise that's it for files now let's move into color grading so let's talk color grading it's possible on here but i wouldn't say it's the best experience there are three color sliders for your primary colors and their secondary counterparts and you can adjust things like brightness contrast hue but obviously this is no resolve or premiere how i got around this is at home on resolve i created a lot from log to rec 709 and a couple adjustments that I normally make on every video. From there, you can actually upload the LUT to LumaFusion, and that's how I got around having to do a lot of color grading on there. I still put a little adjustments on it because obviously not every video is gonna be perfect with a LUT, but if you are using this as a full-time editing computer, I would suggest picking up a basic LUT that you can throw on your clips instead of trying to do all of the editing within LumaFusion itself. It is still a little bit tricky because of cutting. I will get into cutting in a minute, but what I mean by that is you can't select a group of clips and then apply a LUT to all Hey guys, it's future me. I did find a way to select a group of clips and then add color grades or changes on top of it. So it is kind of finicky. The best way to go about this, I would edit one clip and then copy and paste that edit on top of every other unedited clip that I want those attributes on. And now back to the video. 
So color grading, possible, not the best, but there are some workarounds so you can get something similar to what you could do on a computer. Now let's talk about editing. So I'm not gonna go over every single feature LumaFusion has to offer. This isn't a comprehensive video on how it works, but I will highlight a couple features that I think are really useful. The first thing I found really helpful with this program is if you click the clip in your app library, you can select a chunk out of that clip to drop down onto your timeline. This is helpful if you have a really long clip with lots of action in between really boring parts. Rather than dropping the entire clip on your timeline and having to cut out the action, you can just take chunks of it from the viewer and then drop that right down into your timeline. If you're unsure of what any of the buttons do, you can press and hold the question mark in the bottom right corner and that will give you the name of the tool. One tool you should be aware of on here is the insert override tool. What this does is it switches between insert and override mode. Insert is a little bit more beginner friendly. When you're dragging a clip around, it'll give you the option on screen to put it before, after, or in between a cut. If you have two clips, it'll snap them together without a space in between. So this is mostly what you're going to be editing in. Override mode, you'd want to be a little bit more careful with. Whereas in insert mode, if you drag a clip over another clip, it will ask you how you want to replace that clip. This one, it will just replace the clip. And although it gives you a little bit more flexibility, I would be careful with it because you can override certain clips without meaning to do so. One last thing to note is the audio is defaulted to being attached to your video clip on the timeline. So it won't be in two separate channels like you normally would have on an editing program, but you can separate the audio from the video. I'm not going to go too deep into audio editing on here because I'm no audio engineer by any means, but I feel the same way I do about color grading. It's kind of like a dumbed down version of what you would get on those main editing programs. It's great for what it is. There's a lot of equalizer options. If you're into more serious audio editing, you might run into a couple walls. So all we have left to talk about now is effects, transitions, and types. So you got your files organized, you color graded, you cut up your footage. Now you want to add some transitions and effects. You'll find your transitions in the same drop down menu that you would find your imported photos and videos. Click on that little icon, it'll drop that down. You can choose which one you want to drop in and it drops on the timeline nicely. You can choose where you want the transition to go, obviously, how long you would want it to be, just like with any other editing software. And I found it really interesting that they included a story blocks tab on here. Personally, I don't use story blocks, but if you do, then awesome. I mean, it makes it a lot easier for you. One workaround for this, especially for transitions, is planning your clips out ahead. So as you saw earlier in the video, I used a couple spin transitions where I spun into the next clip. You can drop an overlay over clips to kind of hide that cut, but the edits that you can do are not by any means as full as the edits you can do on DaVinci Premiere or Final Cut. This app has totally changed the way I look at an iPad. I mean, I kind of feel silly making this video because I thought I was gonna run into some more issues and have some more workarounds, but it ran seamlessly. I mean, color grading isn't the best, but if you're picking up an iPad and that's all you have, I can't imagine you're doing a great deal of color grading anyway. The biggest issue I had was just storage. That's an iPad issue though, not a LumaFusion issue. I still wouldn't go with the bigger model storage because it's still only 256 gigabytes. You're gonna fill that up fast with videos. Best option would be to get an external hard drive, particularly an M.2 SSD since they are the fastest and then just edit off of that. If you don't have a computer to get the media off your camera onto the hard drive then I would suggest picking up a USB-C hub that you can plug multiple things into then you can just easily transfer the files onto the SSD but I mean LumaFusion even has a fix for that by letting you edit directly off the hard drive rather than having to save stuff to your iPad. You can tell they put a lot of thought into this app to make it run as seamlessly as possible. I mean it's it's so powerful I can't say enough good things about this app. If you stuck around for this long thank you I hope I cured any curiosities you may have answered any questions and if I didn't, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'd love to answer them. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. That's editing a YouTube video on the iPad Air 5. Thanks again, guys. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. Peace.